Hey, how y'all doing out there? It's been a little bit now since Nepal had that big, what, 7.9 earthquake. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little bit about Nepal and some, some other things. Um, I mentioned before about the blood moons and how I thought that uh, this was some kind of a sign, some kind of uh, maybe warning even. And uh, Rabbi Khan has talked about the Shemitah, and, and I can get it, what he's saying. And the Jubilee, I can get that, what he's saying. And I'm, I'm kind of agreeing. So, I want everybody to think about what I'm going to bring to you right now real good. So, take a listen. Hindu devotees gathered at a temple in Nepal for a festival in which thousands of animals were sacrificed to honor the goddess of power. This festival takes place every five years. Visitors with large knives and swords slaughter thousands of water buffalo, cows and other animals. I am praying and making an offering for the welfare of all people and their children. Animal rights groups have condemned the festival, saying that animals suffer at the hands of untrained butchers and that the piles of carcasses are unhygienic. But that has not stopped the roughly one million people who have travelled to the temple from all over Nepal and India this year. The offering of an animal to the Hindu goddess of power is believed to bring prosperity while eating the meat will protect devotees from evil. Some hope the goddess will help solve their problems. We have come here with the intention of solving a domestic issue. In 2009, local media put the number of animals sacrificed at 250,000, but this year organizers insisted there were only around 5,000. Well, that's what they said, only about 5,000. I have heard many, many, many more. I have heard more than 250,000. Now, this goddess of power, goddess, goddess of May, worship in the Bharat district of Nepal, fierce manifestation of Mother Shakti. Thousands of different manifestations of Shakti, but what makes Gadima popular, it appeases her to have animal sacrifice. It relieves the anger of this goddess. And they believe that this goddess can be pleased only through an animal sacrifice. And she blesses them with prosperity, defeating their enemies. Notorious for the sacrifice of a large number of animals. It says here nearly 400,000 animals are sacrificed during the period. She speaks through a high priestess in a temple. When the goddess has to convey a message, the priestess is possessed by the spirit of this goddess. She shudders and quakes in ecstasy and reprimands, blesses, or gives permission. So you have a possession taking place upon the sacrifice of the animal blood. Christ died on the cross as the Lamb and took all the sins of the world and paid the ultimate price so that there would have to be no more animal sacrifice. Under the law in the Old Testament, animal sacrifice was made to atone for sins and get forgiveness. That was no longer necessary once Christ paid the price 
And as you can see, his wish, command, you will have no other gods before me. And these people are sacrificing these animals to this goddess. Shakti is a divine force manifesting to destroy demonic forces and restore balance. Every god in Hinduism has this, his Shakti. Without this, they have no power. Lakshmi is the energy of Vishnu. Parva is the energy of Shiva. I believe CERN has a statue of Shiva in front of it. Shakti is the mother goddess, source of all, universal principle of energy, power, or creativity. The worship of Shakti as this energy is the main objective of Tantra Yoga. This is just one small picture of the devastation in Nepal. We are all children of the Lord. And when we don't do right, just like anybody who has their own children, you have to do something to get their attention when uh, you keep telling them, no, no, don't do that, no, don't do that. Sooner or later, you have to correct them. And <clears throat> the Lord does things in his own way. And unfortunately for us, he has to do things in a big way sometimes, especially whenever you're really out in left field wandering around, um, worshiping something that is going to ultimately cost you separation from his kingdom and his love. I'm sorry about the loss of life and everything, but as I said, I think those moons were a warning. And I think this is the beginning of judgments. And I think that everybody's going to get a judgment, a shaking. Uh, it's got to have a wake up. He says, my people suffer and die from lack of knowledge. That doesn't mean two plus two is four, or how to find London on a, a map of the world. It means wake up and understand things. Understand where the fight really is and who you really are fighting. Now, in Revelation 12.1, <clears throat> you can read, There's a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. All right? A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And then you can keep reading and you'll get to the part where it says, Another wonder, a great red dragon, seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. He takes his tail and draws a third part of the stars of heaven. How many angels rebelled? A third. And he casts them to the earth to the earth. Kind of they're coming down over your head from space, from the heavenly, to the earth. And the dragon stands before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And you can go ahead and, and read this. and He's telling you things, but you've got to understand what he's telling you. The dragon was cast out, the devil, Satan, deceiveth, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels with him. A third of all the angels will ride along with him to the earth. All right? This, and the woman gets two wings of an eagle. She flies in the wilderness into a place where she's nursed for a time, times, and half a time in the face of the serpent. 
Okay, that's going to be 1,260 days. That's three and a half years. Okay. Woman, clothed with the sun, moon under her feet. Virgo, the constellation, Virgo, virgin, woman. Many, many objects in Virgo, but it definitely got enough to consider uh, 12 stars because there's 11 Messier objects just right here named. <clears throat> Deep sky objects also in, in Virgo. So if we come over here, you can see what I'm talking about. Here's Virgo. Here's the sun, clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet. And this is September 17th of 2015, this year. So if we go to 2016, you see where I'm going? You can move it, and move it, and move it. And you can locate where does this look like it's going to be. What year looks like the moon at the feet and the sun at her head And this is 2016. Moon, sun. And it's not there then. You can try and see when things are a little closer. Here's the 23rd, looks pretty, pretty close. Now 2017. I think he's given us a timeline on this one. If you come over to Solar System Scope, you can do the same thing I'm doing, and you can find a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. So he wants everybody to wake up shake the world. But when this happens, he's going to cast in dragons, the dragon, and all his angels down, and everybody's going to get that alien contact they've been looking for, and people's try finally going to find out that they're not aliens, that they're eons old fallen angels, evil. Pure evil. 